What is up guys, how's everyone doing? Uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, hopefully you guys are subscribed uh, to the channel. If you guys aren't, please subscribe, like, and share. Today, uh, we have an amazing creative entrepreneur from uh, Kazakhstan, uh, Arkan Avan. Uh, he is one of the most influential people on social media based on photography in New York City. He started his career don't in overrate me, Times don't overrate. Square. <laughs> Uh, we're giving you the credits that's due to you, brother. Thank you. But uh, he was also uh, invited to the White House uh, to uh, capture the pre President Obama. Uh, it was uh, just an additional like a thing to capture, but it's not yeah. like his portrait. But it was like. But you, you did know, just capture the, uh, yeah. President I, Obama. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, were I invited did. to the White House, yeah. and you also uh, photographed uh, multiple celebrities. A lot. Some of them I didn't know they are celebrity because they were some dif from different countries. Yeah. And when they like tag me next day and you wake up like plus, let's say, 2,000 followers, like, yo, where are these people coming from? And, and then you realize because... So people tag yeah. you and then you realize, oh, they're, they're like yeah, celebrities. I ca some, yeah, because most of the time I capture strangers on the street, right? Like yeah. uh, when it's not the booked photo shoot. And I don't ask them what they do, are they famous or not. So yeah. my job is to give them beautiful moment, capture that shot, you know? I and see. Yeah, that's... That's great. So... Uh, I've been following you for I think a year and a half now, yeah. if, if not more, more yeah. if not more, yeah. if not more. Uh, it was crazy how uh, I started seeing your uh, post blow up. Uh, it was one of it with the Russian rapper Hip Hopper, <laughs> and then it was like crazy comments. I started reading the thing, and I'm a creative entrepreneur too. Like I work with celebrities and like influencers on social media, and then I felt, I, I felt your caption. That was speaking to me or speaking about me. And I was like, God damn, I'm going to comment about this. I don't know what I commented. I commented. I got way too many replies on that comment. And then, like, it, it's... Tell me more. It's, it's, not, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a secret, but uh, I, I dated a girl from your comment section. <laughs> Guys, so... Should I create a dating app, probably? <laughs> Tinder. <laughs> Tinder 2? Tinder 2, yeah. yeah. Tinder 2.0. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't have much success on Tinder, but with the comment section on your Instagram page, you just definitely got me a date. It was it was pretty incredible. <laughs> oh, uh, if, if you're watching this, I think she, she probably is because she followed you. Hi. Uh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> we only dated for two weeks. That wasn't a huge deal. But uh, yeah, let's get back to your story. Like, uh, what part of Kazakhstan are you from and how did you grow up? What's your background? Well, technically, I was born, let's say, maybe you too know. Technically, I was born in Soviet Union in the Kaz well, let's USSR. Say Kazakhstan. Yeah. You were born in 88. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. So it was a part of USSR. And mm -hmm. of course, you're, you're a little kid. You don't know where you're growing. And then in three years, it's Kazakhstan. So everything changed. So, like, so how old were you when Kazakhstan uh, was Kazakhstan, established? Uh, as independent Maybe three years state. old. I was a kid. I don't know. Like I, you I grew you up in one that. country, and I start. I mean, I was born in one country, and then I started growing up in a totally different country. You know what I mean? Like different that's quality. how it felt for you. I mean, right now, I feel like when I look back, like yeah. I, I'm, I was a kid, I didn't know like what is USSR, what is Kazakhstan. For me, it was like you know, there's no no borders. Let's say right. I see. But when you look back right now, like it's things change so fast in the world. You know, you grew, you was born in one country. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've I've seen infrastructure in Kazakhstan. Someone was posting on TikTok. It was like, oh, the city that you never knew about. There are like pyramids. There is this and there is this. It's middle of the earth. It's in Kazakhstan. And then they were showing like yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Astana or it was like Sultan. a promo video. I, it uh, was like is it, it promo? Was, no, it wasn't promo. It was like uh, Americans making a video. Oh really? Ka oh wow. It was TikTok that I was seeing. Interesting. Okay. But I have a question. So were you grown up like in a creative uh, family like were you both oh, your parents oh not like, at all my, my my mom uh, well, my parents were divorced my, but my mom is uh t was a teacher in a uh, college mm -hmm. yeah so my dad well he was a creative i think i think he was a uh, he was an artist he, uh, he was an artist he was doing photography too oh, but not like a, but just like as a hobby probably but okay yeah i don't know him yeah. much because they were divorced so i see yeah, yeah I grew so up how, how old were you when they, when they split up uh i think i was a kid maybe three four three Four. four maybe yeah mm -hmm. I see yeah 
So, uh, when did you and when did you develop this love for photography? Have you been doing it since you were like no, young, every, young age? Taking, yeah, yeah. Or like, like, when you were in the high, when you're in the school, you always like you see all these cameras because uh, uh, I always had this pocket camera, you know, just taking picture of anything, probably the, on automatic films? mode. Uh, even films, yeah. Even those, like uh, you know, like the, the cameras when you use one time and just throw it away. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, yeah but it's, it was not like, oh, I want to make money on photography. No, nothing like that. It's just a hobby. Everyone's taking pictures. Exactly. You know, like it's something that yeah. uh, it's uh, one of the best hobbies. You capture the moment and then it stays forever. But like the first, the, the, the the first memory you have with the camera. How old were you? Uh, six seven yeah six seven yeah, yeah. wow so you you've been into cameras for a very long time yeah but not like using it every day i remember i don't I remember like i haven't but i remember the cameras i was i really loved the cameras when i was like seven eight years old when i was just, just went to the school okay you know, so w you know. was that your main hobby w like growing up or did you no, play I other sports baseball i love baseball? baseball in kazakhstan can you imagine no way yeah you know, I, I found out what baseball was when I came to America. Like uh, baseball when I was, was in Kazakhstan, and I really? played baseball. Yeah, wow. you don't see that in Borat, right? You don't <laughs> see that in Borat. Yeah. By so, the by yeah. the way, the the, the, the Borat was uh, so falsely uh, portrayed about Kazakhstan because I remember. Uh, if you guys don't know but when i was younger when, before coming to america we got up me and my parents got our visas from kazakhstan almaty mm -hmm. we went there honestly from like a small i'm from samarkand that's like a small village it's not a village i'm from the city but it's not like crazy big city you know what i mean and i went to almaty it was futuristic for me like the cars were mercedes-benz bmws new, like all the new, cars, new yeah. cars on the road in 2005 uh, and then coming to America, I found out about Borat like a couple of years later, like maybe in 2009. I'm like, yo, dude, like this is not Kazakhstan. Not, this is not how I remember Kazakhstan. But um, yeah, I mean, people try to get political and try to make fun of other countries to just like tickle their tummy. You know what I mean? But th that's who Sasha Cohen, what's his name? Sa uh, Sasha, Sasha Baron Cohen. I was going to say Sasha Borat Cohen. <laughs> Sasha, Sasha Baron Cohen, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, whatever, he's doing amazing stuff with his career. Uh, we wish uh, the best for his new upcoming film. Uh, but uh, let's get back to you. Uh, wh when did you come to America? Like, uh, So I came here you? for the first time when I was 23. Mm -hmm. I have one video contest from Coca-Cola. I you shot a video? the video on a pocket camera. Okay. I'm, I'm not a videographer, but I had all computer. It was really, really slow. So how did how did you like? How did that go? Like, were you in school competing for something? Uh, no, it was just like a competition for everyone, anyone. It was a, like Coca-Cola promo. So make a video, make a fun video, and then you can win trip to New York City. You know what and I mean? And where did you post that? Uh, on the website, it? so you have to upload submit the video. Yeah, submit the video. But the th the thing is, everyone was submitting videos from the universities, from shopping malls, and all of them were the same, the same Coca Cola background. Yeah, you just go into the cabin, they dance, they have fun, and that's yeah. it. But what I did, I uh, pick up the guitar, I pick mm -hmm. up three chords because I didn't know yeah. how to play, and I yeah. sang that song on the street, did some editing stuff, dancing stuff. You know okay. what I mean? Like TikTok yeah. uh, like in the TikTok. beginning. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And it was like three minutes video. I edited it for maybe like two days, not sleeping. And Damn. I just submitted it. And then, bum, in like two weeks. So, hi, Arkin, you're in the best 30 videos, but you're not winner yet. Please wait. I was like, sure, wow, in the best 30. I was yeah. like, how many videos? Like 16,000. I said, wow, cool. Holy damn, 16,000 yeah. submissions. And I was like, wow, okay. And then you see 16,000, same background. Same background. <laughs> and it was yeah. only like five videos who did like a, a video Different. editing. Yeah, yeah, yeah they yeah. spend their time editing. Simple, but editing. yeah, it was cool. And then, like, in another week, you're a winner. Do you have a passport? I was like, I don't have a passport. I oh, didn't have damn. passport. I was like, okay. damn it. And so it yeah, takes usually two weeks, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I was walking around like all these like places where you get the passport, try to yeah. bribe people. I was like, can oh you, I'll God. pay you money. Can you give me the faster? I was like, no, sir. Tell me about it. Uh, no, I've sir. Had, I've had the same issues back home. Like, <laughs> It's called passport yeah. in the stall, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> they give you such a hard time getting the passport. Uh, I remember going back home, like spending like a month just staying there to like get our passports renewed. But uh, you got your passport within two in three weeks. days. In three days, surprisingly, because yeah. I was so I, I was I paid the, the fastest one possible. It was like a week long. Yeah. And I went there in three days, and yeah. I was like, "Is there my passport? Like, let let me check. There's a new like box. Let me check. Yeah. Oh yeah, I see your passport. Like, yo, oh my god. Because the Coca Cola they gave me uh, like only like a week, yeah. so I can give them my passport information, yeah. so they can uh, apply for a visa. Uh huh. I was like, yo, I I don't have enough time, you know, like, and I was so happy. Wow. 
Yeah. So uh, you, then you got your visa. Yeah, I got your, I got my visa. I came here for five days. I and see. Yeah, I was here for five days and went back to Kazakhstan, but came Wait, back later, two months later. So you came here for five days for the first time. For the That's first how time, I like, got my first like opportunity to be here and. And that was in 2011. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You came straight to New York, or did you straight to New York? Straight yeah. to New mm -hmm. York. So, well, what did you think about it? Like uh, coming here and going back. Like, uh, what, what kind of feelings? My, you my had? mind was like twisted. Like, oh my god, because in Kazakhstan, everything, even though it's a beautiful city, beautiful country, uh, everything moves so slow. You know, people like to do things. Let's do it tomorrow. Tomorrow. Let's do it tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Everything is so. Like slow pace when you come here yeah. uh, and over there you feel like everybody's looking at you watching you judging you here like nobody care you nobody came to cares. new york nobody even looking at you exactly. they bump into you excuse yeah. me and they walk i was like wow wow this is such an amazing city this exactly. that energy you know like, the energy is crazy yeah and it was amazing like when i came back there and you know here people try to be not, even though new york is not nicest like uh city yeah. regarding the people they can get mad or yeah, aggressive yeah, yeah. But after coming back from New York to Kazakhstan, you bump into someone, nobody say excuse me. You say nobody excuse says, me, they look at you like, you're, are you crazy? Why you say crazy. excuse me? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. People like to get into the fight instead exactly. of uh, saying excuse me or be nice to each exactly, other. Exactly, yeah. So Pe people are confrontational back home. Yeah, so I was like, oh, I want to go back to New York City at least for a week. I, I, I just want to run away from here. This place is just, exactly, for me, it was yeah. like very big contrast exactly after, especially after coming and seeing united states but wh where were you studying uh before before you came to uh, uh, law school US? law school yeah yeah and i was a lawyer for six seven months and so I you, gradu like it. you graduated from law I school i didn't graduate but i was able to get a job they you didn't even ask my okay. diploma i don't know I why see. but i got the job you got a job i got a job without diploma <laughs> i see yeah. so uh uh, your your law degree was basically in Kazakhstan. It was yeah. only applicable to the, the it's past not US. Work here. Yeah. It's not, it wouldn't work here. Yeah. Obviously, you came back here, and then uh, two months later, like, what changed? You you came here. Uh, what, what opportunities did you see for yourself? Since what I, did you do for a living? I, since I moved here for since I came here for the first time as a visitor, and my my plane was uh, my airplane, my hotel was paid by Coca Cola. When yeah. I came back here for the like by, my, by myself on my yeah, own by money, yourself, yeah. That where the reality hit me. Like that's damn, a lot of money. That's yeah. it. That's that's different. That's yeah. I had to find a job, and I was sleeping in Central Park because I only had like three or four hundred dollars with me, and I spent. You were my sleeping first in Central yeah, Park? Yeah. No. Yeah. I woke up in Central Park on second day. I opened my eyes and I see that there is an Essex house or some some sign. Yeah, the Essex. I was like, yeah. oh, did I fall asleep in my own town? Because there are some beautiful places in in, in Almaty in yeah, Kazakhstan. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, I gotta go home. And I see, I'm, fi I'm in fucking New York. I was like, what am I doing? I don't have any money. Like, I don't have like hundred fifty dollars, two hundred dollar. No. I was way. like, no way. Same day, uh, next day, I found the job as a delivery guy. Okay. And I found a hostel. Uh, so I slept in the hostel. Whatever I make, I paid for a hostel. Okay. And it was it was it was difficult. It was difficult. For God, me. I, yeah. I I I haven't heard that story yet. That, yeah. Well, it's a short short. I tried to be yeah. short. But but, but yeah. that, that that's surprising. So that was beginning. Like how how many beginning. how many days after you flew into America, you you, you were sleeping in uh, Central Park. Like First day, I I spent somewhere in Brighton Beach. For I paid him fifteen dollar for a guy. Yeah. And I left my my luggage uh, with him. And yeah. He, same day, he, next day, he called me Arkin. I'm sorry, but I'm renting this room for a month to someone else. But you're yeah. free to come to take a shower. Yeah. Or take leave your luggage if you want to. If you're looking for some other apartment. Yeah. And uh, I was like, okay, cool. But uh, there was nowhere to sleep, nowhere to nowhere sleep. Nowhere to now. sleep. And yeah. yeah. And I didn't know the city. There was no things like s Instagram. It was just starting, you know. And yeah. Most everything was starting right a, now. Yeah. A phone with the buttons. Not, yeah. Not yeah, a yeah. Smartphones. Blackberries. Yeah. And I had to yeah. go to an Apple store contact people there yeah. and make deal with them to meet somewhere and they would never come or you know what i mean yeah, it's, it's yeah, hard yeah. to get in contact so if uh wow okay i'm pretty shocked right it now it was with different, this, with different this, story was, yeah. i wasn't expecting this story oh, yeah. so how long <laughs> were, so basically you were homeless for how long uh, two, two, two days, days three two days. days, yeah. And then you just got back on your feet and then started. But working. I would say I was homeless until I found at least a room because hostel. It feel it, when it you live like in a hostel, you home. feel like you're homeless too. Yeah. Because in those hostels, where not those official hostels from like Booking. dot com, yeah. whatever it is, it's shady are, chi oh Chinatown. God, yeah, yeah. You, you you come home and then you can find your socks, your whatever, your personal belongings. It was bad. Like it was. Oh wow. It, that's what homeless Crazy. means. So uh, you, you started your job as delivery, delivery uh, guy? De yeah, yeah. A delivery guy yeah. Uh, in the Manhattan. I was delivering ice cream. I was so surprised. Why would you yeah. order ice cream 
for as a delivery it would melt right yeah yeah uh, so i was delivering ice cream <laughs> Well, you might not know what you were delivering, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was, I was watching guy. this show yesterday on YouTube. Uh, the guys like th they were drug dealers, obviously, you know, they were like, oh, we got bikers around New York City to deal us drugs. And then we used to give them an envelope and those they would be like drugs inside, you know, and then the, the bikers wouldn't know. They just go, they just give the thing and then they move on with their day. But um, it was it was a great documentary. The guy now runs like a fitness center in Manhattan, but whatever. Uh, that's for a different story. Uh, so after delivery, what kind of jobs did you start uh, working delivery, for? Delivery uh, after delivery, I started just picking up anything I want, I, anything I can, because I got fired actually uh, when I was working as a delivery guy. Yeah. The guy, the owner of the store, didn't like that I wanted to put some nice music in his store because it was so dead quiet. Yeah, it was just like boring. Like it was a boring honestly, scene. Yeah, 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 it was a boring scene. I was like, gonna put some music, and you know, there is a so Russian social media where yeah. you can play music. Yeah, I was like, let me play some music and we, he saw that I'm using the social media is that I'm paying you five dollars an hour yeah and you like in social media I said sir I'm trying to put music and my English was so bad yeah I couldn't explain myself he's like you know what my friend go home yeah I was like oh my god yeah and these are some of the yeah. stories that uh, like a real American kids who were born here yeah. the struggles they yeah. don't understand that like immigrant lifestyle everybody ha obviously has their own struggles but not having to speak a language yeah. and coming to a different country it's really and really try hard to survive. and survive yeah, yeah. that's that's the biggest battle that a person can uh, go through uh, and right after that so you did like then many I started, odd, yeah, odd jobs like a bus boy whatever it is you know most of the time they, they, they people will take me for, for will give me a job but mm -hmm. the main question can I, can you bring a social security tomorrow or work authorization that's what yeah. But everything stops and because yeah. I didn't have any papers. You, you didn't have any yeah. paperwork. I needed a cash job, and I would go I to see. Brighton Beach to work as a delivery guy, or not delivery, as a uh, as a bus boy, whatever it is. Wow! And then I picked, yeah. and then I found a good job in a hookah bar through my friends. I see. Uh, so w hookah. where was that hookah bar? Hookah bar was in uh, East Village. First oh, street, first really? avenue. So you you were you worked in the city. I'm not advertising you guys. I'm sorry, but <laughs> <laughs> but that was a nice place, honestly. Nice uh, place, to okay. be to be honest, that day I was off when I found that job. Uh, yeah. I had a friend. Uh, his name was uh, he one of the famous people in Russia. In you know Nikita Presnikov. He's a um, he, 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 his grandmother is Alla Pugacheva. He's like a super Alla famous. Pugacheva, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one of, the, one of the one of the one of the guy. He was my friend. And he's like super yeah. famous. Right? Like, Arkin, let's go to smoke hookah. I said. Nikita, to be honest with you, I'm not rich like you. I'm just trying to survive. I just yeah. came here like a week ago. I need, yeah. uh, not a week, I just find, came here two weeks ago. Yeah. I need to find a job. He was like, let's go to hookah bar. I'm going to pay everything. I'm going to, today is everything on me. Yeah. I went to the hookah bar and the lady was asking me, hey guys, do you know somebody want to help us, you know, as a, you know, for hookah, uh, yeah. whatever, making hookah, serving people. I was like, yeah, yeah. I'm ready. And I yeah. started working next day. So no way. Uh, for That's a year crazy. and a half. Yeah, yeah. But it was a good That's place crazy. to work. Yeah. Yeah. I have my personal stories too like i also worked like many odd jobs like you have i've done bus i've i've, bu I've done a delivery the first job that i had uh, was flyers giving flyers promotion, flyers on promotion. the cars flyers on the buildings yeah. uh, i started with my friend izzy we're like 13 no we're like 14 we used to go to stores like oh you guys well, have came here when you were 14 yeah oh yeah I yeah was 22 so yeah 14 14 uh, and, and then we started doing that and then i started doing moving jobs moving company and then started doing bus boy uh waiter uh and then s yeah I, i've kept bus boy and waiter job for like until i was maybe 20 yeah 20 and then i started doing uber and all these like crazy crazy jobs you know uh i've done uber yellow cabs like really? all the all wow. these jobs yeah wow I, I've done it all. I don't have we, that experience. Yeah, I, I think we should <laughs> make video about you, and about, not <laughs> no, about no, me no. for sure. <laughs> it's fine, but it's, it's more interesting about yeah, you. Yeah. But then, uh, I, before I started my creative process with the videos and stuff, I worked for a billi billionaire. Billionaire. Um, he was treating me like a son. Everything was great. My paycheck was awesome. But my motivation to create content and making videos was going down. And I was like, you know what? Like, yeah, and then the, the pay was good. Like, I was getting paid as much as, like, some of the accountants that make in the city. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, you know what? I have to go and hunt f for my own bread. You know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah, of course. And then I can't just, like, be here and of be, course. like, a yeah. soft boy and just, like, sure. depend on this for the rest of my life. Because uh, they had other driver that worked with them. 
and then he worked with them for 30 years. I'm like, am I going to end up working for this family for 30 years or am I going to go and chase my dreams down? So I, I finally did that. So what made you, like, how long did you uh, spend in the um, hookah bar working? Maybe over a year, yeah. Over year, a year? year and a half, maybe. Yeah. That's the be- that was the best place to improve your English, even though even now it's not perfect. But then uh, they, 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 they gave me the job and two days they told me, Arkin, your English is so bad, bro. Like... We'll give you another week. Just yeah. work as a helper, you yeah, know. Helper, but yeah. don't talk to clients yet. Don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. And That's then good. I was like, yeah, sure. But I'll be helping, and I'll start improving. Just change my language and the phone immediately to English. Everything, everything possible. I start working. That's in amazing. English. So yeah. you 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 put yourself in a. Uh, environment where you had to be forced to learn the language. That of was course. that's great because yeah. some some of the people that are arri- arriving now, especially from my country, we're neighboring countries: Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They hang out with the same people that they hang hung out. Yeah, because like, it's easier. <laughs> you know what I mean? Easier. It's, it's easier. easier, but it's it, it's not gonna help you. It's not gonna help you. Run. Yeah, of course. In the not long at run. All. So, and then uh, you. So what made you quit that uh, hu- hookah bar job? First, it was 15 hours work every day. Almost. I work? used to work like six days a week, you okay. know, and it's not just 15 or 12 hours a day. You have to clean, you have to prepare, you know, and yeah, then you yeah, take yeah. a subway and you don't even sleep and you, you don't see daylight at all. Oh, wow. And yeah. I started dating with a girl. We actually started living together so quick and just in a week as we met each other. Okay. And I was like, I, I wanted to see her too. I was deeply in love. Yeah, let's say, and I needed to find something like uh, you know that will m- probably make me same money but less hours. Yeah, and uh, I decided to when I was in Times Square, I saw this guy is making sketches, you know, of people. Yeah, and just in ten minutes making like thirty dollars, I was like, wow, okay. And uh, I was literally looking at them, and they making a lot of lot of getting a lot of clients to doing that. I was like, for I'm sketching, gonna learn. Yeah, yeah, I was like, I'm gonna learn sketching. But yeah. photography wise, let's, let, don't forget, I was still into photography. I yeah. love photography. I was yeah. taking pictures, not for money. Yeah. And I was like, let me try to make money on the street. And I was practicing on my girl, yeah. uh, doing sketches. And one day I was like, I'm ready. I went to Times Square. I bought the chair. Yeah. I bought the stand. Yeah. Like promo pictures of not my pictures, just someone. John Lennon yeah, yeah. sketches, whatever. And for a week, I made $5. The whole five, week? The whole week, one lady gave me five bucks just. Just it to be nice. Be, She's like, I want to support you. <laughs> but it doesn't look like me. All the sketches look like my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> All the sketches yeah, look like them. your girlfriend. And That's I was like, how funny. can I do to get more clients? Because even though... Even I was not even getting a lot of clients too, like either. Yeah. I got uh, also I got tickets from police officer for vending over ventilation. I was like, I didn't know the rules, you know. Yeah. yeah and yeah. then like, okay, I got to do something, and I always had my camera with me because it's my my hobby, right? Yeah. And I see the couple is coming. I took the picture. Click, click, click. I was like, guys, guys, you look the couples, so beautiful. The, yeah, yeah, the couples. Okay. And my my technique was already there. Like, I my camera with me. I'm here. I'm a photographer, not the so artist. So you wanted to take a picture to get them to, to, to get for them sketches to, to, to sell them sketches. sketches. But they want the picture you I said. couldn't imagine how can I sell pictures like come on right yeah. like like this on the street like, yeah it's weird it, it sounded weird for me because yeah. how would I send them those pictures right or yeah. printing that, the that pictures. was that was the question I don't wanna yeah. Pr- yeah and then like uh, I showed them the picture and I said guys you want a sketch they're like no we don't want sketches we want pictures like which picture the one you took right now I was like right damn here's the product here's a product that's in demand right now here's yeah. a product they would they would keep it forever it's it's a memory yeah that's how i sold my first picture i see so how did you, how did the process go you sending the picture you went home or uh, like n- they were like no we want the picture i said uh, i'm sorry guys i'll be able i'll be able to send you later not right now because i'm an artist i do sketches yeah i was still trying to get them for sketches yeah, yeah. they're like we're ready to pay you like uh, i said for how much you want to pay so. for the pictures like i can sell the picture too like right i need money yeah and they're like 70 dollars i was like in myself, I was like, $70, oh my God. I was like, mm, sure, yeah, but they like, and they go, 60 I said, why 60 You just said 70 <laughs> I said, yeah, and I started bargaining too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, we need $10 to get back to New Jersey. I was like, okay, sure, yeah, but I'll send you later, okay? Yeah, yeah, sure. I took the, I took the money, they email and send it later. Yeah. And I've been doing it for... Do you, do you still have uh, 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 that picture? contact with, the, 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 with those uh, I don't. Couples? I don't think so. Maybe somewhere in email. So they were your first yeah, customers. I would probably look, yeah. I, good idea. I should look for yeah, it. Yeah, I should probably like, yeah, you know, contact them in the future. Like, just like, hey, guys, you know, just to let you guys know. Yeah. You guys were my first customers, you know, because yeah. like those customers are kind of, how can I say, they're the stepping stone to whatever you start in the journey. But it's it's not the end. As soon as I pull out my photo, my camera, yeah, Forty Second Street. You know, it's usually be pre-pandemic. Yeah. Usually a busy area. Everybody, photographers, artists, anybody. You yeah. know. 
and there was like a 30 or 40 photographers making prints you know they have boxes they take take your picture excuse me yeah and then they print it out they're like uh -huh. oh yo you're a photographer too let's go work with us you know like we're gonna we're gonna teach you i said why teach me okay i don't i don't need any yeah you uh, already know your stuff yeah. yeah but i was like okay let's work together you know and they're like, it looks like you already know what you're doing like just we're gonna give you printer we're gonna give you paper we're gonna give you box you just share with us 50 percent yeah i was like let's let's try so next day i tried to, uh, i started trying to do these pictures with printing you know photos yeah but there was no way to capture the moments i had to invite people guys photos <gasps> photos photos yeah. one picture it was it was it was bad you know but i, I was making money but i didn't like it didn't like and it, there yeah. was so many so much competition i was like why would i stand with them if i can just walk around the streets yeah and i true, started yeah. walking around the streets in just a month or two uh doing what i do you know that, that captured the moment and there was nobody doing it nobody Nobody was doing Nobody. it. Nobody. It was really no one. So you were the everybody only one. Everybody was on 42nd Street. Everybody was on 42nd Street. Yeah. Making prints because it's a lot of money. Yeah. One picture, twenty-five dollars, thirty dollars, forty dollars, and from one client you make two hundred dollars. It's see. just a street, yeah. So yeah. It's street sales. Nothing. I see. But you just went a step ahead. You you went to ta the Times Square itself. Yeah. And I, then you I started just, uh, just uh, photographing people. Yeah. So I decided to go away from 42nd Street because go away it's from there. so busy. Everybody's there. You know, it's like a uh, everyone's too much, there. Too much. Too much going on. I went on. to Broadway. It's empty. There's no photographers. Yeah. I was like, it's me it's alone i can do i can capture anyone i want any exactly corner. Yeah, yeah and i started doing that and uh sending pictures from home because there was no wi-fi cameras then yeah no sd card readers or there was exactly. a sd card re reader that didn't work on iphone actually yeah yeah and um someone recommended me this uh sd card called iFi card okay. so it's like wi-fi sd card you okay. connect it to your phone it works as wi-fi so it's sending right to the spot so you, s you started doing that job yeah and uh so w what was the process and when did you felt like you grasped that job and that like that was your for niche? me it was still like just making some extra money you know because uh, okay yeah because you're not selling pictures every time for 70 80 dollars exactly people yeah. don't want to pay five dollars either but exactly. it's a street yeah uh, soon i realized it's not going to be everyday job maybe just some extra because it's still street exactly. nobody knows you you're some uh, guy like yep. uh, how many people like mm -hmm. uh, work on times square they're trying to sell cds and stuff yeah and uh i was i was doing that but later i realized it's not just about making money it's about meeting people it's meeting people meeting, meeting people. different people yeah every time you meet network. someone you learn someone from italy the other guy from saudi arabia you learn uh, their manners they they the w w what kind of city they from you know yeah uh, how about their characters about the attitude culture everything I you're see. more learning than making money you, you d i do i was making money you know twenty dollars thirty dollars anything i see yeah so but when when did you feel that like ah like this is the moment like i made it this is my block you know what i mean oh uh, when you keep doing it every day you know like when you, you feel like people coming back and see you hey arkin you took our picture or persistence yeah and then or in a few months you meet someone like in a coffee shop somewhere in different area they're like oh you took our picture and they show you the wallpaper on the iphone i was like <gasps> Ooh, that's so cool <laughs> Cool, even so though cool, like yeah. I sold it very cheap, it was so cool, and they they remember you. I was like, that's great. They remember you. It's like a good marketing. Like, oh, that's the guy from Times Square. He took pictures. That's and great. And another part uh, where start people inquiring you about more things like weddings or proposal. I and see. And yeah. Okay, so uh, I want to ask the highlights of your career. The most one of the one of the top highlights. Would you say like that that broke you into the industry of photography on Instagram and made mm -hmm. your name out there. Well, what do you think? Well, first of all, I still don't think my s I don't I still don't consider myself as a successful photographer or one of the best, well, but I just obviously, do what I obviously love. Uh, we like to uh, mm -hmm. I, I remember listening to a podcast. A lot of people, men especially, men underestimate themselves. I don't underestimate myself, no, but no, no, I don't no. feel it. Yeah. In general, mm -hmm. I'm yeah, saying yeah. men, men. Mm -hmm. Women overestimate themselves. Oh, really? Oh, like wow. there was there was I a should podcast. Listen to your podcast. There was a podcast <laughs> I was listening to. I don't know. It was like maybe Joe Rogan, maybe it was somebody else. I, I I can't tell which podcast it, mm -hmm. it was, but uh, it, it was something like that. Like men really underestimate themselves. Women just overestimate themselves. Because we want to accomplish more. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, uh, let's get to that story. Like I guess uh, you have many stories to tell. Uh, I want you to be able to like tell those stories that you want to actually share. That was that that's like not usual, for for public to hear. Uh, so I, I guess I want like the um, 
not negative stories. Obviously, they're oh, yeah, they're yeah, they're, they're positive course. stories. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. all of us like have like mountain tops to course, climb, yeah, but yeah. we also go down, up, and down. Mm-hmm. That's how life is. But let, let's talk about the highlights and one of the best moments. So obviously, one of it was getting invited to the White House. Yes. To shoot, and that was by the Obama administration, yes, right? Yes, it was 2015, and okay. I received it. My Instagram was not big, you know. It was just the page. It was like beautiful pictures, 20,000 followers. Yeah. And uh, some guy messaged me like, uh, "Hi, Arkin. You know, I I saw you on Times Square once last year, about a year ago, and I work in the White House now. Yeah. It is. It's already started. It started like sounding weird, like White weird, House. Yeah, Why the would White they House. invite me to the White House? Who am I to invite me? Yeah. Invite me to the White House. And I read the message. He says like we have a special event where all the restrictions will will be lifted of taking pictures of some rooms or something like that. You know, yeah. it was some. So you like, can come yeah. and take pictures. Yeah, and they said we have some influencers coming. I was like. I didn't respond the message immediately because it's it was weird for me. I thought yeah. this is a scam or something. And two days I started looking for this guy by his name. I see he's really working in the White House, and I messaged him back. He said, uh, "Hey man, you want to come? You know, like to the White House? Like yeah. it'll, it'll be it'll be cool." Sorry, one second. Mm-hmm. Uh, you want to come to the White House? It will be cool. I said, mm-hmm. "Sure, yeah." But and he goes like, "Just want to make sure. Are you a citizen?" I was like, "Damn." No, yeah. I don't even have any passport or ID. Yeah. Because uh, immigration, when immigration came to my house to arrest me for they overstay, re- well, immigration came like they two years you? before that uh, to, yeah. to get me to the detention center. Wow. Because I overstayed my visa, but I didn't break any so, law. Or anything. So, so they knew where you were staying, and then they yeah, just came and, and they were nice to me. They just took passport. They said, "Arkin, we're gonna take passport before the court proceedings, whatever." You yeah, know, yeah, when yeah. You So you didn't have passport. Yeah. Nothing, not at all. I only wow. had my expired. ID from Kazakhstan in Russian, so Damn. it was not English letters. Yeah. And I told him no, and I have this. Uh, and then, let me check back with. Uh, that, that feels like a Borat story to me. It is, yeah. <laughs> uh, like it is, okay. it is. So today I'm going oh, to the <laughs> warehouse. Yeah, no, I don't have ID. <laughs> <laughs> I have an so expired no passport, just expired no. ID. Uh, and and every, like, was your passport written in acrylic or the My passport was taken. No, not the passport. Uh, oh, the, 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 ID? the ID, acrylic. Yeah, acrylic. Uh, so they can't even read. Anything. They no. can read your your actual but name. But it's not the problem. Uh, I started yeah. speaking like Borat now. That's oh. not the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I started, uh, it, there was not a problem. The problem was the the uh, when when he said, "Okay, let me check back with the uh, Secret Service." Yeah. <laughs> when he said words Secret Service, like, damn, why did I even like respond <laughs> to this email? You know, like. Why did I I didn't, even, I didn't even make my purpose like uh, in order yet. Every yeah. day. I was like, that's it. I was like, okay, here's my information. He said, all I need your passport number, uh, your if you have your visa number, yeah. picture, anything, and we, we can like take care of that. And in one day, he said, yeah, okay, we can come. Just bring any ID you have. Holy shit. <laughs> Are, are you guys seeing this? Are you guys seeing this? Is cra- like, what this is this? crazy story. So yeah. y- a guy here yeah. who's a photographer in New Over York State City. visa. Over no state status. visa. Doesn't have papers uh uh has mastered his craft is being contacted by the obama administration that was insane that and was then unbelievable. the guy that doesn't have papers and then he gets invited to the white house to take pictures the white house i'm not saying the outside the white house inside. i'm not saying like outside the gate i'm inside. talking about the inside that, that's insane. You know, that's I was a, standing in the story. front of the uh, the White House. They also, when I arrived there, they gave yeah. me an uh, envelope. It was your Instagram name, New York Faces. And yeah. inside there was pictures of uh, Obama dogs, yeah. Bo and Mo, I think, the two dogs, and a yeah. picture of them. I was like, wow, and I'm standing right on the front entrance, looking around from inside, where the tourists taking pictures from outside. outside. I was like, I don't even have papers. I don't have anything. And I'm standing in the White House. And Obama, I knew Obama was on the second floor. I was yeah. like, Dude, and I was gonna leave because I didn't know other people there, who yeah. other influencers. And yeah. uh, uh, the guy comes up to me, uh, the Secret Service, like, "Are you Arkane New York Faces?" I think they know everybody who is like currently inside. They're like, oh, "Are yeah. you New York Faces?" I said, "Yeah." Would you like to meet uh, Mr. President, or you want to take picture of it? I was like, "I was like, <laughs> yes, sir, yeah, sure." No he was way. Like, but how is it? He said, "I don't wow. know yet, but." If you would like to see or take his picture, uh, you can stay here for another hour. Just walk around or you can go out and come back. You want to go out or stay? I said, I want to go out and get some coffee and come back. I was like shaking. And I didn't because wow. I didn't know how it was going to be. We were, like shaking hands or just like from distance. So you actually met him? No, it was from distance. From distance. In the end, yeah, I went yeah. outside and uh, they let me in second time. So I've been there twice basically okay. the same day. I came back and he was just like getting off from back back door. Yeah. to um, go to the helicopter. So, yeah, we took pictures. And of you that. took that picture. Yeah, yeah I, I, saw, I saw that yes, picture. Yeah. 
That, that's not, not my meaning, but it was still cool, you know, being in the backyard. That yeah. is insane. Yeah. You know, this is this is what I talk about. Like <laughs> when you work for, w f like with your craft, you master your craft. It doesn't matter what kind of a human being you are. You're still accepted by by the society. You know what I mean? You just yep. need to like uh, overcome your fears and failures and just like keep moving on with uh, whatever craft that you have and then just keep moving and then people eventually will recognize you and uh, give you the credit that it's due for your work. Yep. And that and I just started insane. then. Like it was only 2 years since I started taking pictures. And, I, and I'm I was still Times Square photographer just taking pictures for And then you went yeah. back after that White House uh, yeah, still event taking, and then still taking take pictures. pictures. Yeah. So because I uh, I realized when you treat people the same yeah. like uh, when you don't ask them, "Hey, is your account uh, is your Instagram verified or not?" like yeah, when you don't yeah. care how much followers they have, yeah. that's when you get the really good like uh, a feedback uh, yeah. what is called a com yeah and most of your pictures were like featured in so many like newspapers and articles yeah and even stuff like that, that, that's what right? yeah sometimes i take picture of couples and i don't ask them where they f like what they do you know i just yeah. take picture gay hey guys this is a picture if you like to get it here you go and then next morning they tag you realize it's like one of the f like most famous singer and uh, like soap opera actress from venezuela and you're like, whoa. And oh, wow. Oh, my God. And all of the fans and friends, they come to meet me. And then you take picture of uh, the ki some kids, and then they tell you, oh, you took picture of... Oh, by the way, uh, I took picture when uh, well, I took picture of uh, kids from Mexico. Yeah. And uh, they were like, oh, they're scrolling my Instagram. And they go like, oh, wow, you took picture of, pres of President Obama. I said, yeah. And then they go like, would you like to take picture of our president in Mexico? I said, yeah, sure, but I have to <laughs> learn Spanish for this. And we're just like, tr I'm transferring the photos, taking the whatever yeah. money they're paying me. And um, I go like, just tr to keep up the conversation, I said, yeah. oh, are you, maybe you're his kids or daughter? And it was just a joke. She said, yeah. yes, I am. I said, oh, cool, okay. Yeah, but you I mean, it's still a joke. joke. Yeah, yeah. Every, everything is a joke. Yeah. And I followed him on Instagram. And then later I was like, let me check. Who's the president of uh, Mexico? I say, yeah. EPN, Enrique Peña Nieto. And yeah. I go there, I see the, these guys' faces. Yeah. And I still treat them the same as I met them on the street. I don't yeah. treat them, oh, my God. Yeah. I always treat the people the same. The same it was, yeah. But it was surprise. And I had a lot of surprises like this. Sometimes, wow. like, my mom used to know, hey, you know, uh, my mom calls me and tells me, you know that guy, he follows you. And uh, there was um, David Guetta, I think, a DJ. Oh, he said, okay, yeah, David yeah. Guetta, yeah. He unfollowed me then, but maybe it was some promotion follow, unfollow thing. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. But he said, oh, these this, this people follows you. And it was always surprised when, yeah, like, that some... That was insane, yeah. I had similar stories, but not with me personally. Yeah. Uh, recently, I was on a trip, uh, not recently, it was almost a year ago, December of 2019, before COVID hit. We were shooting a music video with my friend Natan, and then uh, he hired this uh, uh, DP. His name is uh, Dar Darren, I think. Darren Miller. I th his name is Darren Miller. He's, wor he's worked with Post Malone, with all these uh, famous uh, people. And then I was like checking out his Instagram. I was like, hey, what's your Instagram? And then went to his Instagram. I'm like, oh, dude, you have no idea who follows you, I told him. He was like, who follows me? And I was like, MKBHD. He was like, the, head the guy who reviews wow, all yeah, the full yeah, yeah. cell phone stuff, you know, and then the tech stuff. And he's like, no way. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. And then he started following MKBHD back. Like, it was, a, it was a crazy story, but it's similar to yours, but it's not personal to me. I was there to, like, just see it. Uh, but uh, for me personally, the way I've seen your work blew the hell up was through this Russian artist. I didn't even know he was famous. Uh, Me too. <laughs> I didn't even know he was famous. It was all the girls that were like I was hanging out teenagers. with teenagers, Teenager. not teenagers, but I, I was hanging out with the girls, and they're like, "Oh, this actor is an asshole." You know what he did to this photographer? At this time, I was doing video guy. Vid I was a video guy, you know. Oh, that's how. And, oh, and okay. then and then I was like, "No," and then they sending all these stuff on on the Instagram, and then it was your post, and then your stuff, and I was like, "Dude, like, I." This is how I feel. I worked with so many influencers who have never credited for my for my work, you know. You know, and then you feel like just the credit. It's just the attitude. Too. The attitude yeah. too, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they treat you like you're not worthy of something. But I, thank God, like I, I had a li really low cases like that, like maybe one or two. But uh, at most cases, like I was being respected. It was it was pretty cool. Uh, but them just like. The thing is, with uh, a lot of the, how can I say, uh, influencers or also creators, 
we also thrive on a word of mouth mm-hmm. or yeah, yeah, of or people just shouting you out mm-hmm. on their pages and yeah. that's how we get our work and then yeah. that's how we get known obviously if that happens we we get a lot of uh, jobs yeah to um, just today i woke up in the morning i see the followers coming from i don't know where yeah. like just i don't see likes i only see coming followers coming 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 like what's yeah. going on and somebody sent me a message that i was featured on some 1.2 million page uh verified is not fake i see it's yeah. called brides whatever yeah. about weddings and couples oh, brides. Yeah, yeah, yeah i was like whoa i see all this photographer was huge following follows me i was like whoa wait a second and i didn't even pay anything if they, if they like your job if you like your pictures they share it what what, I, what i've realized yeah. with uh with uh, with the craft once you start do, uh, following your passion, you have to like keep going into that passion and not like not pay too much attention to the like the noise that goes Absolutely around no, you. Absolutely no, nothing. Especially yeah. from your close friends, to yeah. be honest. Yeah, and because I, I wanted to talk about that, like the the close friends thing. Like uh, you mentioned earlier, can you start it off? Oh like, yeah, yeah. When I was working in the hookah bar, like of course you you, you meet a lot of new friends, uh, old yeah. friends come to you. Oh, you work in the hookah bar, you know, like whatever. Yeah. But when I just moved here, I'm I'm very social to be honest. I I, I can go to any spot and make friends immediately. Exa- exactly. But same, I started thing, uh, yeah. using it more proper, you know, not yeah. using it all the time. Just try to focus more on the job and uh, and that. And uh, when I started taking pictures, so people would message me, Arkin, where are you? Why are you left the job? You know, what are you doing? I said, on Times Square. You know, come if you want to. We can, you know, yeah. meet up. I'm always on Times Square. What are you doing? You're taking pictures. Why are you taking pictures there? Are you selling them on the street? Like, are you, what is it? Like, why? Why you don't get a better job? Why you don't come back? You know, you yeah. have to, it's not, you know, it's street. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I was like, maybe, yes. And I was like, fuck that. No, like, it's just what I do. This is what I do. What I, I like. had to stop and, you know, yeah. push them a little bit, like, to, to do, st- like, some, some steps back from them. I see. Because I had to focus on my life, not what uh, people not what wait people for think me. or what people say. Yes. And that time was very, that's the moment when you realize, because many people told me, what are you doing, bro? Like, why are you taking pictures? Oh, yeah. And, like, they that were stopping me. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, like, I think my career began that way, too. Like my parents were against it. Like, mm-hmm. what the hell are you doing? Like, videos? Is that even gonna feed you? You gotta do accounting because my mom was an accountant. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, this will pay you so much money. You're gonna inherit the business. You're gonna do this. You're gonna do that. I like they had the whole thing planned for me, but I'm like, this is my life. At the end of the day, like I have to like choose what I want to do. And in that process, like, uh, I was living alone. Uh, I was sleeping on the floor, in Kings Highway and East Fifteenth. And I was living with like an old old guy, you know, like in his fifties. Kings to, Highway, okay. Kings Highway, yeah. And then I started teaching myself how to edit videos and shoot. And I was like, honestly, that was the happiest moment of my life. Because you love, you love. I right? lo- I love yeah. I love the grind, even though it was hard times for me. Looking back, it was really good moments for me because like I've learned so much uh, through that time. You learn who your friends are the true friends are and yeah, you learn who's a distraction and say judge you from outside what are you doing mm, you know always judging you judging you and then like draining your energy and then not investing in you you know and then you start realizing you know what potentially they're like there are people who i don't know that are willing to do more for me than people i've known for all of my life sure so uh what is, what is your uh what is your perspective now with your business what do you do now and then where, where do you want to take it in the future um за 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 это особенно хотел no no i was going to say uh on times square i think maybe conclude with the i was going to say that t- uh, even though on times square more but on even though mm-hmm. on times square i was uh, you, i'm not selling it very like expensive you know like yeah. uh, not like 700 or whatever uh-huh. like pricing is i realized those people who you would meet on times square that who yeah. brings you a real like uh uh, like good gigs like in the future like exactly uh, yeah that's how you get most of the gi- gigs yeah, yeah yeah so it's not just times square pictures right now for last year i've been there probably 15 percent of my time but people still think still think i live there <laughs> because of the instagram but exactly, uh, i go there yeah. 15 20 percent of the time and uh, so now you're mostly booked with the clients with like it was what, different stuff with events, yeah with events and different Pro- stuff. mostly private shoots many people private still shoots. love to come to times Square do mini shoots they love the lights you know I see. because the uh, best option especially for those who was first time in new york city they want to do I pictures see. there on times square but uh what is the future holding on to you based on new york city would you want to still like 
uh, continue living here but after like all, all this COVID happened or would you see yourself moving out of New York and like uh, uh, you know or like outside of New York or just stay around this tri-state area in New York I would rather stay in New York you but like, you like uh, New York. in the future you know I went to California a month two months ago I really yeah. liked it there I yeah. like the the vibes there. Maybe like California the in the future. I don't know, but like w- with my job, I can really do it anywhere. You yeah. can, you can, even different countries. I don't really like care. Exactly. I can do travel vlogs. I can shoot videos, photos. Really, I'm ready for whenever my my destiny and my life takes me. Honestly. Okay, so basically, yeah, I'm open to that, new. That, new that's di- that's mm-hmm. perfect way to put it because uh, we all say that. We might have bigger plans, but, you know, bigger guy up there has bigger plans for us, you know. So we, we might plan something, but things might go course, not always. the way we want, but even better yeah. than what we are expected to. Nobody knew COVID is coming, right? Like oh 90% percent of photo shoots were canceled uh, or... You yeah. have no idea. Before 2020 began, I had this imagination for 2020. I'm like, this is going to be oh, the greatest too. year yeah, of yeah, my yes. life. <laughs> I'm going to be, be partying like crazy. Uh, especially moving into the new apartment that we had with the roommates. I'm going to spend s- like so much of my time having so much fun. And next thing you know, COVID hits, everything just turned. I think that happened for a good reason. Honestly, I will say why. 100%. I was living with people who were spending a lot of money. And you were spending too. <laughs> and then like they came from like a great family, wealthy, wealthy family. I don't come from a wealthy family. I make my own b- bread, you know. And then... At that point, like hanging out with rich friends, they, they go out to like for for a lunch. They took me once for twelve hundred dollars for four people. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yo, I, I'm not going to spend that much. I already told them I'm not going to spend that much money. All I can spend is like hundred bucks. I can put hundred bucks. And then they're like, bro, sure. Come in. And then the thing is that one hangout is just going to keep going to the second hangouts, the third hangouts. And you're going to go out to the nightclubs that uh, you could probably never afford to go. And then you're like, and you see yourself in the VIP tables with them like every other week. And then they're like, they have more crazy ideas, you know, let's go to Tulum to party. And then you're like, oh, Tulum. <laughs> and then you look at your bank account. Yeah. And you're like, it doesn't say Tulum. I can go <laughs> <You> to. <laughs> <laughs> it says go eat some <laughs> McDonald's. bro. <laughs> you know, that's what it says. And then the thing is, those influences just like keeps your. Uh, goalposts moving from up to up. I mean, I'm not complaining, obviously. I had one of the great, greatest course, years yeah. last year, yeah. having fun hanging out. But I also learned my lesson that I stopped creating the content that I started creating, you know. But hopefully we'll get back into it. Thank you, Arkan, for uh, you. spending the time with us here. Uh, your time is very valuable to us. And hopefully Yours too. Uh, uh, you guys will like and share and subscribe. Uh, and check out Arken, his Instagram. I'll My YouTube too. But, uh, Instagram and YouTube. I'm I'll be linking. Sometimes. I'll be linking everything below. Uh, and yeah, uh, let's get more B-roll shots with Isan. And thank, thank you, Isan. By the way, I'm gonna so link it below. So let's do podcast with him now. Batteries. <laughs> 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 thank you. Subscribe. <laughs>